when you hear sounds like this, you, you tend to think, ah, oh, that can't be an analog synth, right? And the idea here, if this sounds weird, is that in 85, Roland was playing catch up behind Yamaha. Basically everybody was because the DX7 came out. And so what Roland really wanted to do was put out a synthesizer that could sound digital even though it's an analog synth. And I think that's where a lot of the rumors of this being an NCO synth or something like that come from. Um, because it can sound more digital. When you hear sounds like this, you, you tend to think, ah, oh, that can't be an analog synth, right? Oscillator drift is almost identical between the two, which I'm very surprised by. I would have thought that this would have a little bit more analog drift in it because this uses a, um, for those of you guys who don't know, again, something that kind of seems like it would make the synth more digital, but this uses a digital clock that's divided down to create its analog oscillators. This uses an analog clock, basically a high frequency voltage controlled oscillator divided down to create its analog oscillators. And there's always this little debate in the synth snob community, can I get some scum snobs in the chat, about crystal oscillators versus high frequency voltage controlled oscillators. Is there a, um, does one drift more? In this particular case, the answer is no. And by the way, this isn't the only Juno uh, that has that crystal oscillator. The famed Juno 106, as well as a crystal divide down oscillator. So it uses a digital source to create its analog oscillators as well. 